Good evening. I'm doing a uh, video, an important video, on the relationship or the future relationship between Livewire and uh, Tesla in the United States. Now, uh, in Europe, uh, they actually are charging uh, Livewire once now on the Tesla network. So this is France, this is a few months ago. But in anywhere in the EU, they have uh, CCS uh, plugs on Tesla chargers and you can plug into a live wire and you can uh, DC fast charge it. So uh, Elon has announced that that's uh, coming to the United States soon and that's gonna be a great thing. But uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about how the uh, Tesla DC fast charging or the supercharging is gonna impact uh, live wire, especially in regard to the Del Mar. Now I did a, a couple of videos on charging, but uh, nobody, uh, called me from Livewire to tell me that uh, they had changed their mind and they're adding level, or they're adding DC fast charging to Del Mar. So I uh, looked on LinkedIn and I tried to find who at Livewire would be the one that would make that kind of uh, decision because I want to get uh, this video to that person and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, make some changes uh, before uh, the Del Mar or my Del Mar ships next year. So uh, what I found out is the CTO of Livewire is, um, is a Vance Strader. Now what I did is I looked at his LinkedIn and I listened to all his podcasts and everything else and I, uh, I found out some really important things. Uh, one is, is that uh, he started out after college six years at Team Losi, which is a uh, model car uh, racing team. They do both electric and gas and um, seven years at Buell. Now, when he was at Buell, he actually worked with Eric Buell, and that was kind of interesting. And then in 2010, he went to the chief engineer of advanced motorcycles. Now, this is kind of important because at the same time he shows up is basically when uh, uh, Jochen Zeitz shows up and uh, when uh, Ben shows up. And so these are guys that are all new to Harley, and they I all kind of show up in the same time in the same place. And, uh, you know, Livewire comes out of it. Now, when I looked at his LinkedIn, it says that in 2010, he conceived, or conceived and led the advanced development of Harley-Davidson's first EV motorcycle and running prototype. So he's obviously the one that made a lot of decisions about, uh, you know, things like putting the motor uh, below the axles under the bike, uh, the special frame that it's got, the suspension, the the high voltage, I mean, all the things that Livewire One has got, uh, I think we can say that Vance Strader uh, had a very uh, key part in making the decision about what features the bike should have and what it should and shouldn't have. So anyway, <clears throat> when I dug a little bit deeper, I found out that when he was at Buell, uh, Vance did the Firebolt XB9R. Now, uh, there is a quote uh, from Eric Buell in regard to, uh, out of Cycle World, this issue of Cycle World, on October 1st, where Eric Buell says, quote, it was built to be the greatest back road bike of all time. When we started the project, our goal was that there would be no better handling street bikes. So that's what they said in October, 2001. And then Cycle World said uh, the following August, probably the most advanced chassis in sport motorcycling. Now, uh, this is a wonderful handling bike. I uh, rode it when it came out. I've ridden it since. It is, it is, it's an incredible motorcycle. It's got a lot of things. It's got, you know, the gas in the frame. It's got the outboard brakes. It's got all kinds of really innovative things. And uh, I believe a lot of those uh, were done by Vance. But anyway, um, when I thought about it and thought of the handling of the bike and thought of the live wire, it occurred to me that um, the live wire one is an electric Buell. In other words, everybody says that it's the first electric Harley, but what it is, it's an electric Buell. And the way you know that is because the Livewire is the best handling Harley I've ever ridden, okay? Every experienced rider that rides a Livewire always says that. They said, this is the best handling Harley I've ever ridden. Well, you know what? That might be true, but it handles like a Buell. So uh, that's where that came from. Now, I. I dug into it a little bit further in terms of the design of the bikes and the choices that were made. And I also found from Vance's LinkedIn page that he developed suspension analysis software for vehicle handling optimization. Now there's a lot of software out there that already does that. 
So the fact that you would write their, your own means that you think you have a better way or a better understanding of handling, okay? So that only makes sense. And then it says he personally designed nine all-new vehicles that went on to win numerous national and world racing championships from Team Losey. Now, um, Team Losey, <clears throat> I think most people that do uh, models and electric car racing, like the gas, I used to race eight-scale gas, so of course, you know, I know these guys very well, but... You know, these were really, really cool uh, machines that uh, Vance uh, designed. But the main thing that I got out of the LinkedIn page is it said, quote, development of business cases to confirm production business viability. Now, I think that's a fancy way of saying, you know, what makes sense to have on the bike in terms of, you know, is there a business case for it or does it make sense? So I think uh, Van Strader is absolutely the guy uh, <clears throat> that needs to reconsider the uh, DC fast charging on Del Mar. Now, um, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to talk about, as he said on his LinkedIn page, production business viability for Del Mar. Now, they've already done a lot of incredible things, like they've used a single stressed member casting for the battery, motor, and electronics to reduce costs, improve reliability, and durability. Now, I should have put on their weight, okay? So they've got something lighter that's going to be less expensive to manufacture. It's going to be uh, more reliable and durable, okay? So that is a giant win, and that's a, <clears throat> that's a business case that they made to have that. They need to get the price down, reliability up, etc. The next thing that they did is they did a custom, and the thing is high voltage motor and electronic speed controller to, re to retain the live wire feel. So what I mean by that is when I interviewed <clears throat> the engineer at the launch, I asked him what the bike was like to ride. He said it felt like a live wire one. And the reason that it does, it's the same guys doing the custom motor and custom speed controller and electronics to make it feel like live wire. Okay, and then the third thing that they did is they did a high, a custom high voltage battery to reduce cost and weight. Now, the reason they had to do a custom battery is because they wanted something specifically for them and they wanted it high voltage. Now, um, not only is the live wire one high voltage, the Alta was 350 volts, and it's not clear exactly what the live wire is, but if you look at some of the documentation, they talk about going up to, I believe, six or 800 volts. So this thing has some, uh, has some growth at the top. But with all of these things, they made the business decision to have low voltage level one and level two charging. Okay, so my argument is, is that it's not congruent with the rest of the business. So in other words, you're doing, you know, really lightweight, highly reliable, durable stuff. You've got the high voltage motor and battery, and then you have low voltage charging. I mean, you know, I understand hitting a price, but this does not fit in with the rest of the bike. Okay, now, <clears throat> I believe the high voltage must be core to the Livewire brand, to all Livewire motorcycles. Now, I wanna talk about high voltage versus low voltage. All production electric motorcycles use low voltage OEM electronics and motors, except for Energica and Livewire. So everyone else is using other people's stuff, their OEM parts, their low voltage, because there are no uh, high voltage um, motors and, and, and battery packs that'll work with a motorcycle. It's, it's harder to do on a motorcycle than a car, okay? so. Um, everybody else, except for Harley and Energica, is, um, you know, they're using high voltage, custom high voltage that they did. Livewire is the only company, motorcycle company, that develops all high voltage motors and electronics. What happens, Energica has contracted it out. So, you know, Harley is the only one that's doing custom stuff through and through for the uh, motor, the electronics, the batteries, etc. Now this is a very important part. DC fast chargers are high voltage only and go from 200 to 1000 volts. So the CCS standard uh, at the bottom is 200 volts. So that's as low as a DC fast charger can go on CCS, maximum 1000. So a Tesla's like uh, 400, I think a Porsche's 800. 
I'm not sure exactly what the LiveWire One is. I'm assuming it's about 400, but I, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, high voltage for DC fast chargers. Other brands max out with 132 volt battery packs and motors that can never DC fast charge. If it's 132 volts, you can't hook it up to 200 volts, you blow it up. Okay, so Del Mar has a high voltage battery and motor, meaning Del Mar is capable, at least you know, from a battery standpoint, it's capable of fast charging. And I believe that the DC fast charging and the high voltage must be part of the Livewire brand. How do you know it's a Livewire? It's high voltage, that's how you know, okay? That's the difference between Harley and you know everyone else is the way they're doing the high voltage. Now, <clears throat> I understand getting to a 15K price target. I think, that's, I think that's the right target. I mean, I think that's a good price, but a small battery and DC fast charging is workable. So in other words, if I can go 100 miles in the city, maybe you know 60 all around, whatever it is, I mean, that's doable if I can DC fast charge. When I say doable, I mean um, I can do it in Los Angeles area. Like uh, the farthest I go probably in one shot in Los Angeles is probably 50, 60 miles. So, you know, that would be fine for me. I go 50, 60 miles, plug in for a half hour, maybe 45 minutes and be good to go again, etc. So that that's doable. But a small battery pack and a slow charger is a formula for failure. I mean, you're you're, you're cutting too much to get to the price. If you want to cut battery, then you need to go fast charging. If you want to go slow charging, you need a much bigger battery so you don't have to charge. I mean, it just, I really think that the strategy of fast charging and a small battery is, is, is totally workable. In fact, car owners, electric car owners, figure out pretty fast that they don't need, you know, the size battery that they have in their car, you know, based on fast charging networks. Now, how this ties into uh, uh, Tesla is that besides the Tesla supercharger network, uh, Tesla owners ride motorcycles. Now, by the time Delmar ships next year, there'll be over 1 million Teslas on the road in the United States, consisting of 80,000, 400,000 motorcycle owners. Now, the way I got to that is it's 8.04% of the um, car owners also have motorcycles. So that's, I'm just extrapolating on the general population. It may, may actually be higher, but uh, anyway, it's at least 80,400 uh, Tesla people that are motorcycle owners. And these motorcycle owners are comfortable with Tesla's charging network and understand why DC, DC fast charging is important and how it should be used, okay? You use it the same way on a live wire that you would use it in a Tesla car. Now, they consider anything that slow charges a toy and will refer to Del Mar accordingly. So in other words, if you can't fast charge, you're basically a toy. And I, uh, I'm, I'm gonna prove that to you next. Now, what this is, is this is the most popular YouTube channel uh, that's strictly Tesla. They've got 310,000 subscribers. It's called Now You Know. When they post a video, they get like hundreds of thousands of views the first day, and, and they're real views. I mean, they're views with comments. They're not like, other kinds of views. So anyway, I'm going to show you. Uh, they were they talked about this bike last week after the Del Mar announcement, and they have the attitude I think that other Tesla owners are going to have when they talk about the way the bike charges. So here we go. All right, so check this out, Jesse. Harley Davidson just released their second electric motorcycle, the Del Mar. It is a street tracker, whatever that means. <laughs> okay, uh, how much is it gonna cost? The target price, I don't know what they mean when they say that. Probably means they haven't figured out the final price, is $15,000. Now that's $8,000 less than the Livewire 1. The whole point of this motorcycle, I think, is it's a lighter motorcycle, less range, and I think they really want to get the price down and get this into like probably younger riders who don't have as much money. Mm -hmm. So they have a hundred launch editions that have been sold out because they only made a hundred of them uh, at $17,700 each. Oh. Uh, this goes zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds versus the Livewire one, which goes zero to 60 in three seconds. Mm -hmm. It's 440 pounds, so it is a bit lighter. It only has level one and level two charging though. Okay. Um, I mean, come on, it's 2022 and you can't fast charge this thing. 
I feel like this is kind of a weak response to Zero motorcycles, which has a wide selection of electric motorcycles. You know, Zero has much lower starting price uh, electric offerings, mm -hmm. um, and they offer similar ranges in the hundred-ish miles. Yeah, I should have mentioned that this has about a hundred miles of urban range. So read that as if you get on the highway, you're not going to get a hundred miles because obviously the faster you go, the less range you get. So I'm guessing it has something like sixty miles of highway range. And let's just be honest, at that point. I think it's a toy for most people. A motorcycle has to go, in my opinion, 150, 200 miles. I, I agree, and everyone that we've been talking to who likes motorcycles wants a range around that because they want to go for a ride, um, which is completely understandable. I think that this is a more urban, they're going urban, and you can tell in the marketing, they're like, what's urban? I don't know, graffiti. What if we <laughs> jump a skateboarder over the bike? That's so urban. Wow. We're Harley Davidson, and we don't know what the youth is doing in the cities because we're Harley Davidson. I mean, look, the Del Mar is a very powerful bike. Um, yeah. It would be comparable with Zero's most expensive uh, SRF and SRS models, which cost upwards of $20,000. So okay. if they can keep their price target of $15,000, that I think would be the selling point that it's like this torquey, powerful, punchy, you know, city bike. Mm. I just, range. Uh, you, range is, is a big question. It, within a city, like I guess if you lived within LA, or if you LA lived LA has a in, lot of miles to get anywhere. It's true, but I mean, it would be just enough I don't, I don't know i don't think they have it yet but i i want to know maybe this is the bike for you so let us know down in the comments below because i'm not a motorcycle rider right. so i can only assume i can only guess i want to know what you think down in the comments below okay jesse's right um it's uh 60 miles is enough for la but only if you can fast charge to get back now um dc fast charging is the only way to address range because, you know, everybody wants 100, 200 miles on a motorcycle. It's not going to happen, especially for $15,000. But if you have DC fast charging, then you have a way to address the range. I can address anybody's concern about range with DC fast charging. I can't do it with a slow charger. So as it stands, other electric motorcycles cost less and have more range. Here's $16,195 MSRP, 163 city range, which probably means it's, you know, 100 on the freeway maybe, but it's 132 volts, so it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't fast charge. So, so that's, um, that's what we need to address. We need to address the DC fast charging. It needs to be on the bike. High voltage needs to be part of the branding and everything uh, needs to uh, DC fast charge. So anyway, uh, thanks very much. Uh, have a nice evening. Uh, next video, I'm going to review a new book I just read called Breaking Boundaries. Very interesting book, and there's a, a movie that goes with it. So anyway, have a nice evening. Bye.